Hey guys, uh, this video is going to be a presentation on a proof of concept I've developed relating to the DigitalOcean bootloader problem. So, as uh, some of you may know, if you use this provider, they have a serious issue in their boot system in that you don't get to choose your own kernel. Uh, the kernel and RAM disk are loaded from outside your virtual machine and you don't get control over the options or anything and it, this has actually led to them having to maintain dozens and dozens of kernels and kernel images to uh, to manage and it really just adds a ton of unnecessary administrative overhead so this is a proof of concept. This is more directed at the staff here in case, you know, so this does actually make it to someone there. I, w I would love to have that happen and have this uh, be implemented, but this is basically just a drop-in replacement to uh, actually get bootloaders working somewhat properly. To, to my knowledge, this is a dr completely drop-in replacement for what they have now. So this is to the best of my knowledge the setup they have to where they have QEMU running a virtual machine and they load in everything from outside the machine so this is just pulling straight from my desktop that I'm on right now uh, the kernel and RAM disk and then it's also specifying the kernel options so if I run the script it uh, launches a virtual machine SDA is just the hard drive image. So as you can see, uh, dev SDA is the root file system. It has a label of do root. It's ext4 and it is a partitionless disk. And the uh, bootloader in the virtual machine was not used at all during the boot process. Now this is an extremely easily implementable solution and I'm just going to go through the entire thing right now so step one is install grub on the VM alright and then uh, step two is to go into the boot folder and just generate a grub config like you would on a normal arch machine so you do that by uh, grub mk config and you pipe that into grub.cfg. All right. All right. Now at this point, uh we are in the slash boot folder and I'm just going to make a directory called do grub. And now we're going to sim link two things. we're going to symlink the grub config that we generated and a folder in user lib grub called i386-pc so the only real custom thing we had to do here is create a folder and two symlinks and this is literally the only thing you have to modify on the image is install a package, create a config, which is the way normal machines boot, and then create an extra folder with two symlinks. And I'm just going to power this off. All right, and uh, I'm going to cut this hard drive image and place it into a new folder called new. So we have a run script, the hard drive image. So this run script is a little different. It does not load a kernel a Linux kernel or a RAM disk or kernel options it loads a grub image and uh, grub.img does not exist yet but grubgen this is a script I use to generate the grub image it's very simple it just generates grub.img uh, it includes a couple modules that it just needs to read the hard drive and it sets the default um, hard drive the location 
that it starts in. So dogrub is the folder we created with two sim links. Very easy. So I'm going to run this script and it's going to generate grub.image. Now this grub image, it, you can just drop it into the current system they have now of uh, to where they just load different kernel images. This works exactly the same way. Okay, so if we run the run script, it launches QEMU, and this grub config is on the actual virtual machine. Okay, so the no kernel or boot configuration was loaded from outside the virtual machine. This is 100% in the virtual machine. And you can see the modules work fine, network's working fine, everything is working fine, and we booted using a boot configuration kernel and RAM disk from inside the machine. Alright, so you can see partitionless disk, you know, root file system, ext4. So that is literally all you have to do. On the images you need to install grub, generate a config, create one folder with two sim links, and generate a grub image. Uh, I hope I have displayed everything in enough detail that is necessary to copy this. And I hope this makes it to at least one person working for DigitalOcean. And, uh, you know, maybe this will get the ball rolling a little bit because they seem to have just kind of pushed this under the rug um, because not enough people are complaining about it. And it really the solution is not that hard. It, you know, this is not a perfect solution, but given their current infrastructure, it would be 100% better and requires almost no effort. So, uh, I, I would be happy to help as much or as little as needed. If anyone does actually see this, feel free to contact me. But, uh, anyway, thanks for listening. Uh, I hope this is educational or informative, and uh, I will see you later.